back at WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are, uh, we're sponsored proudly by all sorts of great places, but this whole thing began in Catonsville, which is we're going to go back to this. Our friends at Faithleys are came, coming to Catonsville, and they're, they're shipping crab cakes everywhere, inspiring the crab cake connoisseur club and uh, and my uh, crab cake democracy tour coming up here this summer uh, inspired by nancy divine and our friends over at Fadley. so we hope you're supporting them getting over to lexi in the market i took some fish home last week as well our friends at state fair in catonsville have also inspired some great conversations we'll be back in the parking lot there uh, i did grab some uh, some salmon uh, the other day as well as a cob salad that delicious fried chicken donald i'll be back in the parking lot there doing some socially distanced conversation hopefully right around preakness time and beginning our crab cake tour don moeller is here for this one he's former bomber county executive and i will make these guys laugh because he was my high school guidance counselor in 1982 uh and uh in the honor of baseball season i have brought camden yards here together don this is your show man because like i think you're already putting the seats out for the uh, fourth of july parade i know that the 818 is going to be sort of a, a hub a centerpiece they'll make sure that the dark ice cream doesn't melt on that particular day don this is one of your favorite stories and this heart back to your time as county executive, your homeland, the unofficial mayor's mayor's assistant at Catonsville, but this is your hub. I, I don't think you go a couple days without being in the 818, right? Well, it, ju just to be clear, the, ma the mayor lives next door. That would be Uncle Jimmy Moeller. Uh, I just get to run his errand. So the, the, the true mayor lives <laughs> next door. But, you, you know, Nestor, this is, as I get ready to introduce these two guests, friends of mine, this is a story I was thinking when you said how long this goes back for years when I worked uh, as chief of staff for Jim Smith and then for Kevin Kaminitz and then certainly as county executive, people would say to me, when, when are we going to get, when are you going to get us something cool in case some kind of cool market, some kind of growls type thing or better than growls. And we're, we're a great community and we're, 10 minutes from the airport and we're 10 minutes from downtown and we're 30 minutes from DC. Why don't we have one of these really cool destinations? And I'd have to say to them, well, part of the problem is guys, I'm not an investor. I'm not a developer. I'm not a marketer and I'm not a restaurateur, but lo and behold, a couple of Catonsville guys said, we'll do that. And what do you know, now smack dab in the middle of Catonsville is one of the most anticipated amenities to ever come to this village, 818 Market. And it was created, I say, it's by a, a, a businessman, a vet, and, and a chef, and they get together and say, let's open a market. So it's, it's my pleasure to welcome Pat Baldwin and Dan Zakai. Welcome to your first but not last appearance on Baltimore Positive. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. We're happy to be here. Well, well Pat, I was there for the ribbon ahead, cutting, Nestor. right? So, uh, you know, I, I sort of know what it is. But if nobody's been, what do you tell them? I mean, I, I run into you on an airplane or a golf course, and I say, all right, you know, what do you do? And you're like, oh, 818 Margo, well, what's that? And and I, I guess, Pat, Dan, you have at it. What, what are you at this point? Well, you know, uh, there is a word for it. And like all marketing words, it's a pretty rough one, Ness. So uh, a grocerant is what we're supposed to call ourselves. Ah, in the I never heard that word. There I we know, go. I know. There we didn't we go with go. 818 grocerant, you'll notice. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I'd say for people who have been to Italy and New York, for instance, <laughs> a place that's really built as a food destination. In some ways, I'd say the closest we have locally here is a Belvedere Square or a little bit of a Belvedere Square combined with an R house. Um, I think our concept was to create a destination where foodies could come and enjoy themselves. So it's a grocery store, it's a bottle shop liquor store. We have a full service bar, restaurant. We have outdoor seating here. We have outdoor seating out front on Frederick Road. And it's really a place that you can come as a family. And if you wanted to, you could spend a few hours. You could order some food in the restaurant, order a cocktail, walk downstairs and do some grocery shopping while you have your cocktail, go back upstairs, eat your restaurant food and grab something from the bakery and some Taharka ice cream on your way out the door. So we try to be a, a real destination that a family or a person who enjoys food can come to and really explore and have fun. 
You know, I love that you said Italy because, like, I, I, you know, I know Italy and New York and Chicago and whatever, and, and I, that's not where I would have, I, I, you know, it, and I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, it's kind of like Italy and Kate. <laughs> it's the Italy of Catonsville. Dan, is, is that the way you would have uh, probably described it? Um, so that certainly is is a very good way of describing it. Yes, um, certainly with that marketing term as a as a grocery aunt there, you know, sometimes it does take a little bit further explanation from that for, for some people. I've never heard that to, term, and I'm a grown No, exactly. Grocery that brought okay. that up to me. I was like, all right, it sounds good. Um, but yeah, so yeah, we're, you know, a full-on gourmet grocer. We have, yeah, deli, bakery, cafe, butcher, seafood, sushi. Um, and then, yeah, you throw in a restaurant, you throw in a grocery store, everything as well, too. So I compare us to, you know, kind of like a, a growls, things like that, but with the added bonus of having a restaurant, having a full-on liquor store in it as well, too. And then to top it all off, it's delivery. So we can deliver food seven days a week. We can deliver beer, wine, and liquor seven days a week as well, too. Um, so that convenience side of it, um, that we, we, we really wanted to push with people as well, too. So, yeah, you're feeling lazy on a Sunday? Give us a call. We'll bring brunch by. We'll bring some liquor by. We'll bring some beer by, some cocktails by, whatever you want. Um, just make it really easy for the people in Catonsville to, yeah, to enjoy good food and and have fun. Make it easy to sit on Muller's porch, I think, for me. <laughs> well, exactly. Hey, Dan, which, which, which class in veterinary school covered opening a, a, a grocer on? <laughs> which year was that in that veterinary was school? That was some of my extramural studies that I did along with <laughs> lambing and along with uh, working on uh, doing some some beef farms and uh, and on pigs farm. It was, yeah, it was the, uh, well, hey, you should learn about groceries as well, too. Well, you <laughs> I know, wish, you know, I, but I, no, it's a complete, I mean, it was just, you know, just one of those things. I'm an, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, after opening the vet hospital, you'd hear people come in and talk and they tell you about old Catonville and the way things used to be and the grocery stores that used to be around and all, how they would miss it. So, you know, I sat next door for 10 years hearing people going, wow, I wish somebody would do something about Catonsville. I wish we could do this. Hey, it's great you put this building in here, but things have kind of stalled. What's going on? You know, it'd be awesome to have this. And then I was like, well, you know what? I have a perfect audience in front of me with all my clients. So, hey, I started talking about, well, what about this? You know, how would you feel about having a market open up? And, you know, when it was all positive comments and all positive reviews on the idea. So I said, you know what, why not? I love this town. I live here. I've committed to being here the rest of my life. And uh, yeah, why not do something, try and do something, uh, you know, for the community as well too. It makes it better for everybody. Well, Nestor, there are so many neat parts to this story. And, it, and at some point before we wrap this uh, I feel like the, the Barney Fife at Catonsville. I just need to get out of the way. Well, man, you guys... I, I, there are neat parts to this story. Because... <laughs> Let Andy Griffith tell this story is what I'm thinking. <laughs> there was a historic building uh, that where 818 Market is. And I think, and Pat, you, you'll fill in the blank. I think the original idea was maybe to renovate that, but then structurally and other issues, it didn't work. But rather than just knock it to the ground, and build building 101 that looked like every other building. You guys made a decision that had to be an expensive decision to say, all right, if we're going to knock it down, we're not just going to build any old Acme building. We're going to build something that people will be talking about for years. It has a similar character down to the point where you even reclaimed the wood. Talk about that part. Pat and maybe Dan jump in because I know you did a lot of the woodworking about the reclamation of the building and how this thing evolved. Yeah, I think when we bought the building, as you said, Don, we really loved the old building. We loved the old porch that was on there and loved the old Catonsville feel. And we really felt like we bought what we considered the most beautiful building in the center of town. And then, yes, you open the walls up and you start seeing the condition of the building. And you start realizing, well, it's an 1880s barn with a 1930s steel structure around it with a 1970s lean to around that. And you're looking at it and, and we thought we could make it work with our concept of a grocery store. But then we got the opportunity to purchase a liquor license. Um, Steve Whalen uh, had a couple for sale and we reached out to him. Um, made the connection with him and were able to get a liquor license here. And that really evolved the concept to include a full restaurant and bar and liquor store as well. 
And at that point, the sheer weight of equipment we were looking to bring in was just not going to be supported by the structure that was here. And as you said, we looked at the building and we thought, man, we love this building. It's got these great old timbers. It's got, there must be some way to do more than what the contractors were telling us, which is let us come in, knock the thing down and we'll be building within a couple of weeks. And I'll hand off to Dan at this point because it's really his expertise and vision that brought the building I'm sitting behind right now to life. Well, and I'll that. say this, I mean, I, my wife and I watch a lot of home reno and business reno and sort of the theology of the space. And, you know, I mean, every vineyard's built on all you know, the story, right? And I mean, yours is very rich. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, as Pat said too, you know, once we, once we did that interior demolition, it was just a, a literal house of cards. You kind of look at things and go, yeah, this is, this is interesting. I'm, you know, wondering how this building is still standing at this point in time now that we pulled all this stuff on the, um, on the inside. Um, and then, yeah, with that whole demolition process, we knew that we wanted to save as much of the old wood inside as, as possible and try and use that in the, in the new building. Um, and yeah, that was just a labor of love. Um, you know, we started at the top and just worked our way down and, and tried to save as much of the old wood as possible. Um, and we were able to save a lot. So yeah, as Don was saying, there's a lot of stuff in the building. Um, our bar upstairs, our chef's table upstairs, all of that is made with the reclaimed wood. Um, we have our window sills around the top that are made with reclaimed wood as well too. All the POS systems downstairs and our deli counter is all made from the reclaimed wood. Um, and I still have lots of wood left as well too. So we have a high top table upstairs that's made from the reclaimed wood. So be knocking some more of those out once the weather gets, well, today's a perfect day for doing it actually, but I have some other projects on my list, um, <laughs> as well, always. Dan, 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 people people might not even infer from what you're saying. You did a lot of the carpentry, correct? Yes. Yeah. I had, a, I had a, a, some very talented people helping me as well, too. Um, but yeah, it was, I mean, it was six months of, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I still have splinters in my hand from, uh, from dealing with that stuff. They're always popping up here and there um well i mean yeah, i would say to you you're in a hurry to get it done but you're in the middle of a plague too right so i mean like trying to figure out you, you know a timeline on getting something done that all of you had other things going on in your lives right yeah no exactly i mean it was uh you know 2020 was a was definitely a tough year you know full-on construction and just yeah trying to deal with pandemic kids in school running another business you know, just all the, the stress involved with that. And yeah, it's been a tough year. I mean, it's nice to, uh, nice to be out of 2020. And you know, I guess, I mean, a third of the way through 2021 now. So we haven't even fully gotten to utilize the vision and the dream of indoor outdoor. I mean, the times I've been there, it's been masks and certain people, you know, uh, I've, I've come in and bought a six pack on occasion, uh, you know, coming through, I, I, I you you don't even know what it is yet, right? Like what, what you want it to be because it's not normal. It's almost like a little bit of a test run for you guys, right? Oh, definitely. I mean, and we still have people every day that, you know, engage in conversation and go, this is the first time I've been out in a year, you know? Right. We had a couple of family in the other day and they're, you know, this is the first time they've been out to eat, you know, in a restaurant in, in a year. And you're kind of going, that's great, you know? It's awesome you chose us to come out here. Um, and that's it. You know, I think people now are feeling more comfortable. And hopefully, yeah, in the next few, you know, next few months, as that, you know, that trend continues, yeah, we'll be able to see the full effect of, of 818 Market in the community as far as, you know, our you know, concert series and, you know, live music events and just our community involvements, you know, that we like to do as well, too. So you said concerts, yeah. Don, that's your hot button. Go ahead. Well, give them the music story. Well, Mary. well, well, now they know the music story. I, I, Nestor, I think that's one of the keys that excited folks so much about this venture was that these are two local guys. These aren't out of town developers. These aren't the big boys with the big pockets and the billion. These are local guys who said, I want my community to be better. And that's sort of been embraced, I think, from the beginning of 818. And Pat, Nestor mentioned the pandemic. You all made a decision that shouldn't be controversial. I applaud you for it. Uh, still in place today and may be a model for other businesses as we try to get to the end of this daggone thing. And that is when I come to 818, I get my temperature taken 
and I have to mask up before I come in. Talk about that decision, Pat, and how it was received and why you guys made that decision. Because not every, you took it above and beyond. You're one of the very few places that's happened to me, by the way. Okay. Um, you know, it, it's not easy and it's not easy for the places that aren't doing those things easy. None of us either. None of us really know what the right answers are. We try to fi- follow guidance as it's given to us. Um, I'm lucky that I have a, a partner with a background in the medical field who I can bounce ideas off of. And then you listen to your staff. So our goal was to find to create a situation that we thought was as safe as we could create and that added comfort for our staff and our guests and our community. Um, and yeah, what we came up with was that early on when we had crowds around opening, we were counting every guest in and out and controlling the crowd size. I look forward to that being a, a problem sometime again soon this summer, um, but we haven't been doing that recently, but we have, everyone's been masked. Everyone on the staff is masked. Everyone on the staff takes their temperature as they come in. Every guest takes their temperature, provides their temperature as they come in on the thermometers that we have set up. Um, And there has been some pushback to that. Some people say, you know, the CDC doesn't recommend the temperature checks. There's no proof that it controls pandemic. And that was one that really, I talked to people, Dan and I talked to each other. We talked to EMTs that we know locally, nurses, doctors that we know locally, we talk to our staff and everyone feels a lot more comfortable with that measure in place. Um, We've to date only had one person since we opened in November whose temperature was above the limit and did not come in. They used our takeout window uh, that's right on the side. Um, We've had a handful of people who objected to it. By the way, if I came in uh, and I was at State Fair the other day, if I stopped in and grabbed some cheese, you know, whatever, and you told me my temperature was high, I'd be like, thank you. Uh, like, you know, maybe I, maybe I have, you know, maybe I have COVID. Maybe, maybe I'm not doing, but you know, I I looked at it as a reassurance for me. It's kind of like when you go into a place and they check to make sure nobody has a gun, good. That's, that's fine. That that means I'm safe. You know, like I looked at it that way. I wasn't, I didn't think it was intrusive. I thought of, I thought it was a good check-in for me, you know? Yeah. And the vast majority of people, you know, every day I, Yeah, every day I take my kids' temperatures and log them in an app for their school so that everyone's being safe. And is any individual measure the difference in a pandemic? Who knows? We've all never lived through this before and hopefully won't again, but we're doing what we can. And, and, you know, as you said, the pandemic's created challenges. It's also created some opportunities for us, uh, you know, having some crowd controls, not being able to do, people can't walk around drinking a glass of wine, for instance, while they shop right now, which certainly is in the vision of the place. uh, And hopefully we'll get there sometime soon, but not doing some of those things have allowed us to increase our focus on the community, for instance. So Dan touched on um, this organization, Catonsville Emergency Assistance locally, that uh, focuses on food insecurity, which is a real passion of Dan's and something that really drove the choice of businesses that we launched here. Eventually, we'd love to be putting more of these into food deserts around the area. Um, But I'll let Dan expand on that if we have time. But we do work with Catonsville Emergency Assistance. And you know what's happened during this pandemic? the number of people with food insecurity and problems around that has skyrocketed and the number of families who need a helping hand. And to date, we've donated over $11,000 worth of food to Catonsville Emergency Assistance, Love the Hopeful, an organization that focuses on helping the homeless locally. And this is one of the reasons that I think Catonsville is, a, and maybe Baltimore County as a whole, maybe Maryland as a whole is great, We have so many local owners like us. You mentioned the guys at State Fair, Evan and Keith, they're friends. Um, They're so involved in the community. We're involved in the community with them. I heard about that playground back on April 1st. That was something that they're putting together over there. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, it's not going to be a bad, a whole State Fair in the parking lot. There you go, little bumper cars happening. Well, you know, you mentioned, uh, again, we are with Pat Baldwin and Dan Sakai, owners of 818 Market. If you have not, I don't care where you are in the region, Make it a destination. Get to 818. Uh, You won't be disappointed. I want to talk about a couple of experiences I had over 
a, a recent weekend in there. And, and one thing, Pat, I, I texted you afterwards and told you how pleased I was with a couple of things. And I learned something. And that was, first of all, took me a second and my grandson a second to get our temperature taken. Appreciated it. Not a problem at all. Made me feel very, very safe in the restaurant. Um, but I joked, I think I bought all the shrimp you had in the, in the case. And then you told me the story, which I had no idea. And uh, as the family came over on Sunday, was telling them and they didn't have any. You're one of the few places that actually has not frozen shrimps coming straight to us from Carolina. Tell us that story, because that was pretty cool. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, one of the. uh... I would say we have to give, you know, give credit to uh, to, um, to, you know, to our staff, you know, in particular, that decision, you know, and that sourcing of that product was was made by Sebastian, Um, our kind of uh, butcher and uh, and seafood specialist. Um, Yeah. And through his contacts was able to was able to, you know, to, to source this this never frozen shrimp. Yeah. Which is, you know, is something that it's so simple but then when you think about it you go wow like that's there's a a certain logistics chain in, in doing that is, is certainly very difficult to do and and it's but it's great it, it certainly comes through with the quality of the product um and it's a nice yeah. thing to be able to, to offer people as well too uh, and it was and we look for that overall look for those products that really differentiate us so in that case fresh North Carolina boat shrimp, never frozen, driven right up here to JJ McDonald, another local company, locally owned company who's supplying our seafood case. And it re- works really well. And then to, to your plate for a great family meal. Oh, it was, t- it was t- terrific. crab cake. So that sounds good. I'm into that. I'm into <laughs> the, local. The, the shrimp was terrific. And as you know, my favorite spot, and there are a lot of nice spots in 818, but my favorite spot is your cheese shop. And I was so delighted. I was li- I was delighted when you moved it from the second floor. Not that I can't walk to the second floor. No, it's not <laughs> on the second floor anymore. It's at the top. No, of the it's steps. right as you walk in now, right off Frederick Road, and it sits right there. And did you lobby um, them for this? No, but I actually, when Pat did it, I told him, oh, you know, I was actually thinking about <laughs> suggesting you move it to the first floor. Um, but Nestor, part of the story about. I don't know, Pat, you'll tell us how many millions of cheeses you have. It's, it's, it's remarkable. And your cheesemonger, she's amazing. But then there was this other young lady that waited on me Sunday or Saturday, I guess I was in there. And um, she waited on me and she was so pleasant and so knowledgeable and so helpful. I thought, man, this is, I always threaten that I'm going to write a book about outstanding employees and how you find them. I thought, man, she'd be, she'd be in my book because she was great. And then you shocked the daylights out of me about telling me who she was and how old she was. Tell that story. I'm Googling well, cheesemonger. Be- I, I don't know what the, what is it? A person who sells cheese butter. On- so this is why he was, was an educator. He teaches me stuff, you know? <laughs> it was really important to us to build what <clears throat> we consider the best cheese shop in Baltimore. And you mentioned our selection. We have over 80 cheeses hand cut. We have cases that are filled with cheese. And a real key to doing that was finding uh, a woman who actually had come down from a cheese shop in New York while the pandemic shut that shop, Katie Adler, who helped us build just what we do consider the best cheese shop in Baltimore. And I she kept identifies Don, as a cheesemonger, correct? A head cheesemonger. I, so, I'm, so I kept telling I'm learning. Don, hey, we've got we don't, an elevator. We don't, listen, back. this Gucci stuff, I'm from Dundalk. I mean, I, I have <laughs> taste for all of this, right? Believe me. But I didn't know this word. I mean, it must be an SAT thing. I don't know. I know. know. Grocerants, they have cheesemongers sometime. I know. We try not to do this. Moeller, I told you I was going to learn during this show, and this is what we're here for. It's what, it's, <laughs> it's what makes this show special. So we did move the cheese shop downstairs. We have an elevator that comes up to the cheese shop here, but we wanted to make it the centerpiece of the store, which is where it is. And on Sunday, Don was happy to find out that the woman he met was a, uh, a young Comet, actually, a junior over at Catonsville High, Liv, who's been working with us in the cheese shop, the restaurant, just about anywhere we need help from day one. And yeah, she's a a model employee you know and we have so many people like that who work for us you hear it's easy to make jokes about millennials and you know i'm so old now that millennials don't even mean people lives age right that they're older but then you work with these kids who are hard working who learn who have a real thirst to 
become a cheesemonger for you, Don, where you're meeting with uh, a young lady who's only been working in cheese for a few months, has learned great stuff from Katie. Yeah, and, I know the uh, word somulet. You know what I mean? I know yeah. things like that. This is, I'm, we have I'm them learning. Too. I we thought a cheesemonger too. was my wife because she eats a lot of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, Literally. Well, <laughs> my Master, wife Master, loves cheese. <laughs> Master, I'm not exaggerating. And again, former principal of Catonsville High School, <laughs> I know people are going, yeah, yeah, he's going to say that because she's a comet. I'm telling you, I'm always proud of my comets. This young lady, if, if, when, I, when Pat told me she was 17 and a high school student, I thought, Okay, there's put a check next to her name and keep an eye on her because she's got all of the soft skills that it takes to be successful. She was so congratulations to everybody, to her mom and dad and to what's her name? Liv, you said? Liv. Liv, yeah, she was she was spectacular. Now you mentioned comets. Somewhere along the way, you two guys say, let's track down this other comet, this guy named Matt Milani that people know this outstanding world-class chef from side streets in Ellicott city. And most recently cooking for the governor, cooking for governor Hogan in Annapolis. Uh, how did you guys hook up and get this world-class chef, Matt Milani to come on board in this venture? So that actually happened. Um, he's a, a client at the vet hospital. Um, he's been a client at the vet hospital for years. Um, so you know, we used to go down to Ellicott City. My wife and I, we used to eat at the rumor mill on a, you know, on a regular basis. Um, so kind of first got to know him then and then realized, oh, hey, you're also a client of ours as well, too, at the vet hospital. So just through the years, you know, we kind of had that contact. And then, um, yeah, kind of followed him after the floods in Ellicott City. You know, where are you going? What's going on? And, yeah, you know, various things at the governor as well, too. Um, and then, yeah, when we kind of had this idea, I, I remember it was during an appointment one day standing in front of me and I just said hey you know we're opening up a thinking about opening up a grocery store and a, and a restaurant and everything and hey what do you think um and uh he was very excited about it, excited about coming into Catonsville excited about bringing his his style and level of food to the Catonsville area as well too um and just being a, a local guy you know from this area as well too you kind of go great you know it's it's a kind of a, a perfect match Weird, out of the three of you, I think I knew him best. He was the guy yelling at me when uh, Johnny O opened the place. I want to, Dan, I want to go back to the veterinarian thing. Um, everybody that knows me knows I love my cat. I've been home alone with my cat. She hurt her backside. Tell me about your, your vet house. Because I have a vet who's a couple blocks from my house, right? It's the worst thing in the world. I have to put her in the bag and take her down. I love her so much. But she really hurt herself two weeks ago. And, and it was like on a weekend where my vet's not open on Sunday, Monday, whatever. G tell me about your place a little bit because, like, I was I found myself in need of that and didn't realize that I had a connection. Yeah, so I mean we're open Monday through Friday. We're a silver full service venue hospital. So we'll see emergencies for our clients, the community, you know, during our open hours there. We see regular appointments, we schedule surgeries, you know, we kind of do everything there. We communicate with specialists to get up, you know, to get ultrasounds and other advanced radiological procedures scheduled. Um, you know, we can run blood work, do all that stuff. And then fortunately as well, you know, Catonsville's, you know, is, is, is a great spot for veterinary medicine as well, too, because we also have the emergency hospital across the street, which in your situation, when you're going, hey, what do I do on a Saturday or a Sunday at 10 o'clock? There's an emergency hospital that you can go down to, um, you know, for care as well, too. And they're terrific as far as communicating, um, you know results of tests getting patients transferred back and forth oh, there's um, nothing i mean other than my son there's nothing more traumatic than seeing my cat limp and my wife not here and me being oh my god y you know what do i do and uh knowing that there are resources is important yeah and people see them you know and people see them as as part of the family now as well too um you know there are people that will do absolutely anything you know for their animals and it's terrific i completely understand i mean i'll do absolutely anything for my animals as well too um, but it's nice to be able to have those those resources to yeah. I want to circle back on level. your on your business in the entrepreneur side of this. And Pat, I'll bring you into this too because you talk about this young lady in Catonsville. This time last year, eight one eight was a concept. I remember being over there and you guys were scrambling, building, and Don saying, "This is where one day we'll get dark ice cream and you don't have fresh prosciutto out on the deck." Um, employing people. Uh, one of my partners uh, always would say to me, um, you want to make something important in life, make a payroll, make a payroll. 
you know, and as somebody that's owned a place and had a large, I had a million dollar year payroll at one point, uh, Pat, when you were listening to me as nasty Nestor 20 years ago, things have changed in my life. I'm doing something different. When you build something new, I'm thinking about this now with my brand, right? Like, how many people is it going to be? How many people are we going to need? You know, who are we going to employ? Are we going to need a head cheesemonger? You, you know, I mean, uh, if we're going to have Italy, what do they have here in Italy? Or, or what? For you guys in employing people and you talk about people and, and Don, you talk about the people in the place being last year, they were working somewhere else. So they, were, they weren't working, right? Like you've put people to work in Catonsville. Yeah. And I'll let Dan talk a little bit because he's obviously built a couple businesses now that employ a lot of people in Catonsville. Uh, but that was an important part to us is how we build a business that was a real economic hub as well for the area. And, and it's difficult, as you know, you go out and you do numbers on a spreadsheet and lines on a spreadsheet, but you picked one. We didn't have a line for head cheesemonger or someone to come and really lead that project until we met Kate. And it was really a perfect fit for someone who could help us set up the vision that we had for the cheese shop and head cheesemonger became the title. Um, but we brought in 120 people over the course of six weeks, full and part-time people. Um, and it's a lot of hiring and you can't do it all well. And you swell up for the holidays and then you're in a pandemic and you're going, well, what's uh, the flow of the flow of customers going to be like, and you have to adjust to all that. Um, and you're dealing with fresh seafood, of, fresh, 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 right? Yeah. But, and we're dealing with things like, you know, initially the, our, our liquor sales were very constrained to within the store. We've marketed those a lot out through the store, which means we need more 21 plus cashiers than we were initially hiring for, which means, you know, my son, uh, got his shifts cut and, and so did a lot of his friends and that and those kind of decisions are tough and but you know how it is as you own a business you make the right decisions and you employ other people and bring them in and you keep growing and I, I think that's the stage we've been in and um, we're really enjoying it now we're hiring now we just brought in um, Gretchen Shuey, who ran Bean Hollow, which was a coffee shop in Ellicott City that got wiped out in the first flood with Matt's restaurant. And then Gretchen rebuilt and her second place got wiped out in the second flood as well. Um, Gretchen's been looking for her nice next step. She lives right around the corner. She just joined our team to run that cafe, deli, bakery area and really turn it into what will feel like a branded bean hollow type coffee shop experience. Well, that really you, feeds yeah, into let her know, the, I'll be able to rate the the well, 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 that really, that really feeds in, doesn't it? To the Italy concept, because Gretchen had such a following at bean hollow. I can remember guys, you know, I'd, I'd be in there because my, my granddaughter actually worked there for a period of time. <clears throat> she actually was there the day of the one. Of, I can't remember first or second flood and had left. Her shift ended right There's before. There's nobody like, in your end of town that hasn't been affected by the floods, right? Oh, my gosh. I mean, it was no. just, no. I mean, remarkable. Buildings flooding. You go down down the road. But so Gretchen had a huge following. And I, I would always comment because parking was awful, you know, right in that part of Ellicott City. Yet it was always crowded. And I would say, my wife and I would come and say, I would say to my granddaughter, I'd say, Madison, this is remarkable. I mean, it's, it's really hard to park. Yet this place is always packed. So she has, that's, that's really neat to be bringing that. L listen, a couple of things. You've been very gracious with your time. You have businesses to run. I'm going to put you both on the spot a little bit uh, before we ask you what's coming up uh, the, later this summer at 818, what you're looking forward to. But Pat and Dan, what's the, what's the best meal you've had from Milani so far? Let's, let's put the heat on him. What's the thing that he's cooked up that you said, folks, when you come to 818, make sure you get this from Chef Matt. <clears throat> So for me, I'd probably say it would be two things. Um, one, I really, really enjoy the pork belly that he makes. Um, and that was actually one of the things when he was going through his, uh, his menu, I, I asked him, I said, hey, can you put some pork belly on the small plates? Because I'd really like to have that. That's always a, a big, uh, always a big fan of pork belly. Um, and then kind of taking it to the other extreme, some of the vegan and vegetarian options that he has that I've normally wouldn't try so mushroom tart is delicious the roasted cauliflower as well too and it's and i can't decide between those two as my uh as my other favorite there 
So well, you had my guess, daughter-in-law at, at vegan, so she'll probably uh, be up there tonight. Uh, how about you, Pat? What do you? It's not the vegan stuff for you, Pat. I'm guessing. No, so I'll give you <laughs> from from Chef's Kitchen, and our kitchen is going 24 hours. So you mentioned Gretchen. Like, she didn't have a whole kitchen at Bean Hollow. Now she has a kitchen and a whole bake team that is baking her good. So when you come in and look at our bake case, all of that is baked overnight in the in-house here. So dark chocolate really chips, some dark, the things. dark ones, maybe like a 60 or a 70 is what I'm looking for. All right. In cookies that they make about this big. It's incredible. But you can mix a nut Milani's in there, too. Kitchen, I, I, I'm, I'm good. I don't have any nut allergies. Do whatever you want in there, all right? From Milani's Kitchen, I'll go with a special I had a couple weeks ago. He made this grouper. We got some black grouper into the seafood case uh, that was fresh. And he made this grouper in this broth that he made with a mushroom broth around it that was just I mean, I've eaten at French Laundry and Per Se and everywhere in the world. Charleston's my favorite restaurant in the world downtown. And this dish was right up there with it. And then, like Dan, I'll go the other end of the spectrum. When we were doing specials for March Madness, Chef whipped up some jalapeno poppers. They oh, those were, one were of really the most good. amazing thing I've ever tasted. And, you know, it's a cool concept because you can come here and have jalapeno poppers done by a world class Cordon Bleu chef, right? One restaurant tour of the year in his history. And then you could go downstairs, buy some poppers and some cream cheese and go home and try to make them yourself and see what you can do. Um, and that's kind of a cool concept. And so the, those poppers were a little close to my heart as well. Well, I'll get well, Matt to host a little, uh, you know, chef had it, had a man. I don't want jalapeno, but it doesn't sound, it's not appealing to me. It sounds spicy. I like the spicy. Well, he does I'll a mean for- crab cake too, Nestor. So we'll well, all right. So go. this is where we're going to get down with this. Um, I'm doing the crab cake thing. I've been bragging out. I'll probably be doing it the rest of my life. I will. I know yours is the best, right? I mean, I, I, I know <laughs> yours is the best, right? So it, 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 it's always that way, right? But uh, for you guys, other than Matt and your own place, I'm asking this question of everyone. It's universal because I'm making a list like Santa Claus and checking it twice. Um, Someone flies into town that's a celebrity, that's a big shot, and you have to take them out for a crab cake someplace, not for ambiance or any of that, just best crab cake, what they're going to put in their mouth, because we all have a different palate, fried, broiled, all of that. Um, and I'm going to be talking about the difference between Indonesian crab meat and Maryland crab meat in Texas. I'm educating everyone. But for both of you, Pat, first with you, let's go. So, you know, with us, I will point out, you can eat a crab cake and then go buy the Maryland crab cake crab meat downstairs and eat it at home, which is pretty unusual. But I'll say I've got two Nestor, depending on where I am. If I'm out near the airport, I'm a G&M guy. I'm, I'm old school, so I love them. Um, and if I'm in the city, I always took people to Fadley's because you get the Lexington Market experience too. And I'll point out that now in a few months, you'll have Fadley's State Fair and 818 and just a couple walk, a uh, couple block walk in Catonsville. I'll argue Catonsville is the place to come for crab cakes in a couple months in Catonsville. Every in, time uh, we exactly. make a turn down any of the Bloomsberries or, you know, any of the mantra, wherever we are, there, my, my, my wife's like, this would be a nice place to live. We could walk to 818. Well, it's a lovely yeah. place you know, to live. You know, we hear it all the time. You know, you, you guys know my son, Jeff, and, and Moeller and Gary Realtors there. We're pleased that they sponsor the show. And he talks all the time about Catonsville being a destination location for folks. And it's such a Baltimore positive story. We say it was summer homes years ago for people from the city. And it's 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 just so convenient. But it's 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 investments like yours that make that a reality. Dan, how about you on the spot? So we got Fadley's and we got – G and M from Pat. What do we get from you if somebody comes into town? Yeah, no, it'd be the fade. These would be like in the market. That's a true Baltimore experience there for people as well, too. Um, but yeah, you know, now it's one of those things where you kind of go, hey, we can just skip out and go to Catonsville. And you know what? We got three places to try for you. I want you to let me know what you think is the best. But yeah, always point in the direction of uh, 818 Market and, uh, and drop some hints on, uh, yeah, <laughs> as us being the best. But well, hey, man, we appreciate you guys, uh, and, and I've appreciated being in the store, coming by, grabbing ice cream. Uh, I, I've learned so much. I mean, I've learned what a cheesemonger is in this segment. I mean, I feel like I need to review all of this, but more hey, than anything. I got one more for you, Nestor. Uh-oh. Go ahead. Parking does exist in Catonsville. You come out back, I, we've got a whole parking lot here, and Dan said 
that he's closed on the weekends, the entire Frederick Road Vet Hospital parking lot is ours all weekend. Yep. So you don't parking even need to worry about cars. parking when you come out, pulling off eggs and come. So it's not like a holiday express. I don't need like a little lanyard or anything like that. Uh, all right, I have never out. had trouble parking out back, Nestor. It's been terrific. Park right out back. Come right in. Just just an outstanding addition to the Catonsville business scene. You know, I, I would just say this, and I know the music things, the next story to be told and everything that's going on there. But I think the next story is, you know, literally during this segment, I got an email about getting a vaccine this week. Right. Like so the vaccines are happening. People are getting out. And I'm sure we're going to have a different story in July and August than maybe we had last year when you guys were getting this going. I'm looking forward to telling your story, having a crab cake. Um, tell Matt, like. What was more important than this? I mean, ask him, you know what I mean? Let him know I'm pressuring him, you know? Well, our entire staff's vaccinated here, so maybe he was driving someone to get a vaccine. There you catching go. catching that grouper, like that. you know, you there guys you are making out there. Pat, appreciate you, Dan. Appreciate you. Everyone, get out to 818, the 818 market. Uh, make sure you stop by there. Uh, get some cheese. Get get some beer. That's what usually lures me in. Uh, and also, the, like, fresh pursuit and stuff like that. That always kind of gets my attention to get a little thing shaved. They take great care of you out there. Catonsville. Don's been talking about it since before it was open. Now we've done a segment. Go see Dan, Pat, and if you see Matt, ask him where the hell he was last hour. It was more important <laughs> than being here. Uh, tell him he owes me a crab cake out of all this. On behalf of former Baltimore County Executive Don Moeller and the official, unofficial mayor of Catonsville, Jimmy Moeller, I am Nestor. We are WNST.net AM 1570 and we never stop talking. Baltimore, positive. <laughs>